a dream If I could take you up in paradise up above If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love Life could be a dream, sweetheart Hello, hello again Hello, this is Michael Solomon with Dream Life Lucid, where we learn to master lucid dreaming so we can live our dream lives. This video is titled, Words Are Spells. So the deeper I get into this dream life journey of self-accountability and manifestation, uh, you know, checking my own self-sabotaging thoughts, negative beliefs, negative self-talk, whatever the case may be, mental patterns that I had to face and then get rid of. The only way you get rid of them is to face them. So. The more I do this scouring my brain or my uh, my mind and finding all the the little negative idiosyncrasies that need to be eradicated in order for me to live the dream life, the more work that I do on myself, the more painfully aware I am of the same negative habits that I have worked to eradicate. I see it in other people, such as my friends and everybody else now. Doesn't make anybody a bad person for using words in a negative light, but you can actually have good intentions, but if you're not using the tools, and in this case, the tools are words, if you're not using the tools in the manner that they were designed to be used, then you're not gonna be as efficient and your outcome is not gonna be what you're looking for. So you got a big tree in the backyard or something for years and you finally decide to go cut it down. You go buy the, the Axe J9 2000 XL or whatever, and start whacking away at the tree. But you're using the back end of the ax to whack away at the tree. Now I'm not saying that you're not gonna be able to knock the tree down, but if you turn the tool around and use the sharp edge and hit the tree with the ax the way it's supposed to be used, you're gonna have a much more efficient outcome than if you had not. So that's why I made this video. So I have to quit explaining it to people like, hey man, you're speaking negative or whatever. So I made this video to bring conscious awareness to the power and the use of our words. So many of us have good intentions, but we have never fully grasped the absolute power that words have on one, yourself, two, others, and three, the world that you live in, which I kind of tie that in yourself anyway, once you get into it. Self-talk, the most important conversation that you can have is the one that you hold with yourself. Your internal dialogue directly dictates your mood, belief in self, your self-esteem, and or your reality, okay? Number two would be others. Uh, this is an obvious one. We're all aware of how the right word spoken at the right or the wrong time has the power in an instant to uplift somebody, inspire millions, encourage, discourage, enrage, or enlighten. You get the picture, right? So that's the effect the words can have on others. That's pretty obvious. And the third one is the world. When it comes to the world around you, again, I'm from the school of thought that everything outside of ourselves comes from within ourselves. Every situation that we're in, whether good or bad, is a collection of our past thoughts up to this point. Unless, of course, you're like preteen under the roof of your parents or whatever, have absolutely no say until you actually get to that point. But um, for everybody else, the world that you live in is the one that you created with your own mind and, and or words. So therefore, we have the power to create and control our world with words. So words are literally spells. Now, if you think that I'm taking this a little too deep or a little too literal, I am. And, and let's go back to the beginning. And when I say go back to the beginning, in order to understand a concept in its simplest form, we have to break it down to its rudimentary elements, okay? So we're gonna take this all the way back to kindergarten and get you familiar with the alphabet. Okay, so we're all familiar with the alphabet, right? But what exactly is the alphabet? The modern definition of alphabet is a set of letters or symbols in a fixed order used to represent the basic sounds of a language, in particular the set of letters from A to Z. Now that definition alone is simple enough. Let's dig a little deeper for a much more intuitive understanding of what's going on with the use of language. With that said, let's replace all of the major words in the definition of alphabet with some of their synonyms. Let's see what we come up with. We're gonna change this definition to an array of characters or images in an established layout used to embody the elemental vibrations of a dialect or tongue. Everybody can agree that's basically the same thing, different words, sounds a little spooky, right? So in that second half of that definition is the vital ingredients in an arrangement which fuse to create complicated existence. 
What I want you guys to understand here when we're talking about vibration, frequency, tongue, all that stuff, everything around you is frequency and vibration. Everything. Nikola Tesla has a quote. Let me see. He said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And everything is vibration from this tabletop to the hat I'm wearing to the colors that I see is all vibration. When I say from the colors I see, um, everybody doesn't know, it's not maybe common knowledge, but the reason that we actually see colors is because of frequency and vibration. Our eyes pick it up on certain frequencies within the ultraviolet spectrum. So same thing. So it's all a scale from the colors from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. This is a scale, um, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so. The scale of music's the same range, you know, one, two, three. So the numbers even represent a frequency. So like number one in another language or another time might have been wrote as a dot or whatever. And now it's a line up and down. That symbol is being used to represent the frequency in the numbers. And the same thing is happening with the letters, if that makes sense. So again, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, do, re, mi, one, two, three, ABC. Um, ABC is the frequency of speech, the arrangement of frequent alphabets. So your alphabet is actually an arrangement. It's, it's a frequency alphabet, literally. So it's an arrangement of signs that represent certain frequencies, right? That's what the definition says. So that's why we have spelling bees that harp on the proper spelling of a word, because that's the first thing that you learn how to do after you learn your alphabet. You learn how to spell. So when we speak, we spell. We cast spells when we speak. Be aware of that because your, your world will change simply by changing the words you use. I mean, ancient Kemet, excuse me, uh, that's Egypt to um, the ones who raped and pillaged and stole the language and history and religion and everything, they call it Egypt. The adepts call it Kemet because that's what it was called. So. Um, in ancient Kemet as well document how our ancestors healed the human body with sound waves. This has been documented over the eons using herps and things of this nature to actually play certain frequencies to get people's body back in tune or even even catching a cold, c catching a cold. You're, you're more susceptible to sickness because of your frequency. So for instance, this is just throwing this out there, uh, the random number, you catch the flu at like 577 megahertz catch the code at like 380 or something like that. But there's a scale to even what you're susceptible of getting sick with based off of frequencies too. So frequencies, everything, it's everywhere. It's in our math, it's in the table you're sitting in. It's well documented that our ancestors treated human body with sound waves. So today this is being introduced to something new called cymatics. Now, cymatics is the study of wave phenomenon, especially sound and their visual representations. So sound has a visual representation. Reinforcing further the fact that certain vibrations or frequencies physically manifest in various ways, okay? The only difference when using your words are the intentions behind them, okay? So with cymatics, basically they, I've seen it where they have like a, uh, a metal table and they might put powder or water on top of it and then from under the table there's like a speaker that they pump a certain frequency through and as the frequency changes the sounds and the patterns in the powder or the water that's over that metal plate change as well so literally words and frequencies physically manifest themselves in various ways and that's why we have to watch our words the only difference when it comes to the words is the intentions behind them so we knowingly or unknowingly create forms to be when we speak. Just like, I don't say certain words like blessed. I don't say I'm blessed because that's a curse actually. I'm saying be less. Bliss is that state of nirvana where you're in such, a, such high spirits that anything bad, you could, ignorance is bliss, right? So you could be in such high spirits that you're completely oblivious to any of the negativity around you. And you can get into this state even using words too, but that's a whole nother video. Words are definitely spelled. We learn our alphabet in kindergarten. The first thing we learned after that was how to spell. 
And you're spelling to this day. So what I want you guys to do is be conscious of your internal dialogue, watch your words in everything that you do. Uh, speak positive. So the vibration actually causes other things to be. So I want you guys to be conscious of that and be aware of that. Check your own thoughts, check your own inner dialogue, and, and the world's gonna check itself for you. This is Michael Solomon, inspiring you all to dream life lucid. Thank you.